So now if you remember, one of the examples which we have taken for user input was using system.in.read. Now once we know about this exception class and how to handle the exception, let's try to take the input from the user using buffer reader. Now for that what we'll be doing is, again we'll be asking the user to enter a number. But using buffer reader is a bit difficult, I mean normally people, pe people don't prefer to use buffer reader to take the input, we use scanner. But still, I wanted to tell you about buffer reader because using buffer reader, we, will, we can cover some of the uh, topics which, which, which we want to talk about in exceptions. Now, basically, how you take input from the user. So, you have to answer three questions when you talk about buffer reader. It is what, where, and how. Okay. So, what data you're getting, from where you're getting it, and in which format you're getting, which is how. Okay. So, now let me create the object of buffer reader will say buffer reader br equal to new buffer reader. Now that's how you create object of buffer reader will say buffer reader. Now if you see this buffer reader is asking you for the object okay which object is asking for. So let me, let me just control say control space it, you can see buffer reader is asking for object of reader. Now basically it is asking you for the object of input stream reader. That means in order to create object of buffer reader, first we have to create object of input stream reader. So what we'll do is we'll come here, we'll say input stream reader, we'll name it as is equal to new input stream reader. And now this will ask you for the object of system.in. Okay. So when you, whenever you want to create an object of buffer reader, first you have to create object of input stream reader, then only you can, you can pass that object here in buffer reader, so you will get this object. But to create object of input stream reader, you have to pass system.in, okay, and let me remove all this extra stuff from here. And now we got the object of buffer reader. So what we are doing here is we are specifying from where we are getting the input. So we are getting the input from the keyboard because when you say system.in, so this in represents your, it represents an object which will take the input, input from the keyboard and it will convert that into a stream format. Now that stream goes, to your, goes into your buffer and using br, now you can take the input. So let, let me save that value in int n and we can simply say br.read read line. So that's a method which we use to take the input. The only concern here is this read line gives you a string, okay? So it, it gives you a string, what we want is int. So we have to convert this into an integer format. Now how do we do that? So we have a method called as pass int. So pass int is a method which will take the string. So it will take a string and it will give you the integer. But the only thing is pass int is, is a static method. So we have to use a class name to refer that. And the class name is integer. So whenever you want to convert a normal string into integer, we have to use integer.passint. The problem is even if you enter a number, let's say if you enter 45, so that 45 will be coming in double quotes. So even if you say 45, from the user it will be coming as a string format. What this passint will do is it will convert that string format into integer format. So it will remove this, uh, it will remove the double quotes from a string format, it will give you the integer format. And once you got that, let me just print the value with the system dot out dot print and n. And it, I think it should work now. If I run this code, you can see it's asking for the number 45. Enter, you got 45. Okay, so yeah, that's how you take the input from the user. But this time we have used buffer reader. In fact, in buffer reader, if you see this object which is 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 used only once, right? So what you can do is you can cut this part and you can paste it here. So you don't have to create the object separately. And now still it will work if I, run, if I run this, if I say 78, you got 78. So that's how you use buffer reader to take the input from the user. Uh, in the next video, we'll talk about, uh, we'll talk about uh, checked exception. And after that, we'll talk about scanner class.